Hello, welcome everybody. This is Neil with Portal to Ascension. Thank you all so much for being here right now with us. We are going into, I think it's episode nine. I lost count at seven, <laughs> but I think we're at episode nine right now. Um, Jock will probably refresh my memory, but we're going deep into the Bosnian Pyramid Complex. And um, today again, Josh is gonna, uh, Jock is gonna bless us with his presence and the energy and information that he's been, he's been collecting and researching in regards to the Bosnian Pyramid Complex. Um, next week, I think is the last week, but he did suggest maybe going a little longer since he has a, a plethora, a, a huge archive of awareness and content that he could really show us in regards to this. It's been really exciting because this is just a lot of information in regards to that one area and giving us this context of something that's pretty new on the scene in regards to how it connects to ancient history and the technology that was used there, who could have used it, what the surrounding um, areas are for, uh, could have been used for. It's been very interesting. So we are now, um, I think, live on Facebook. So hello to everybody joining us on Facebook, everybody in the Zoom room, and everyone checking this out later on YouTube. We're going to go ahead and get started. Brother Jock, you there? Hey, brother. How's it going? <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't have my headphones in. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, how are you? <laughs> Good, man. Welcome. What's up? I'm just toasting you and the world. <laughs> the world that cares about um, humanity's past on Earth and uh, all the civilizations that, that came here, the mosh pit of ancient civilizations. I'm toasting you with Texas well water. Um, I hope everybody has access to good, pure water because we need to think straight and, and yep. good, pure water will help us do that. Cheers. Cheers to you, bro. I'll drink to that. All right, man. We're excited. Why don't you go ahead and tell us what we're going to be learning today? All right. First of all, I've got to show you my shirt because I, I don't buy shirts with words on them, period. I haven't done that in 40 years. But I did do that in the Bosnian Pyramid Complex, and this is that shirt. <clears throat> Digging the true history, um, because it's not just Bosnia, right? It's not special in that only Bosnia has the secret to, to our past. But, uh, all these uh, megalithic sites around the world have our keys. You know, it's just a question of what, which ones you sort of resonate with. Well, a lot of people, 550,000 tourists have come to Bosnia in the, since 2005. I was one of them. <clears throat> I came as a volunteer. And then came back in 2014 to do some videography for the foundation that Samir Osmanagic, who discovered the pyramids, started. So um, that foundation employs 30 people, and it's a Bosnian NGO nonprofit. It's called Archaeological Park Foundation. It's based out of Sarajevo. And tourists come by the droves to witness this amazing, mysterious place. I mean, it's just it's a, it's a place of mystery. You know, not answers yet. Although scientists are slowly, slowly getting toward that. Now we have the, on the one hand, we have the scientists who come to Bosnia. Many, 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 many research teams have come to Bosnia since 2005 to, to investigate various aspects of the Bosnian pyramid complex. And there are many, many, many different aspects to it. Energetic aspects. We've got scalar wave uh, <clears throat> indication on the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun. We've got uh, orbs in the Ravne Tunnel. We've got Schumann resonance in Ravne Tunnel. We've got water channels with high bovis rating, uh, great organ energy um, readings in, in Ravne Tunnel. And on the other hand, you have the university professors. And the university professors tell the media, there's no pyramids in Bosnia. And the scientists are going, well, we went there. And we do, it's not even a question of whether there's pyramids. We're just trying to figure out what they're for. So you've got, so you've got these balancing forces, right? And I'm just trying to get the word out, as you are, Neil, about various aspects of what has been gone on, you know, using science, using the best uh, measures of knowledge that we have, right? to help us uh, understand our past, to help us understand who we are. Because we don't understand our past, we have no idea who we are. So let's, uh, let's begin with this little 
slideshow. This is called filtering. This talk is called filtering out university indoctrination. Because as I mentioned, we've got the professors in academia telling us one thing and the tourists going to Bosnia and going, well, I'm glad I didn't listen. So this is uh, specifically the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. All right. This is, there was a road that was made many, 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 many years ago before this hill, so so-called hill, Visočica Hill, was thought to be a pyramid. And the road was free excavation. And then slowly there was rainwater that came down this hill. And you could, so the, the structure of the hill was exposed. So this uh, is the eastern face of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, the tallest documented pyramid in the world. And you see this, these two um, baked clay stone blocks next to each other with a small, maybe centimeter wide sp space for the soft earthquake mitigating clay. Then you've got the soft earthquake mitigating clay on the top and on the bottom. And the orthodoxy in academia is going to tell you that that's a sedimentary layer. So, and they're going to say, you know, don't even bother going to Bosnia. So I, I, I thought in 2014, early 2014, I, th I thought I'm going to write to some professors around the world in archaeology, anthropology, and geology from community colleges all the way up to the most prestigious universities on the planet. So I found all their email addresses and I wrote them individually. I didn't write group emails. So I wrote 1,300 professors individually. It took two weeks to research and find them and then write them. Okay, so uh, I mean, I spent several days just sending emails once I found them. Now I take, I've taken out the name of this particular professor in this particular letter on March 23, 2014 at 111 PM. <clears throat> Dear uh, brackets, institutional orthodoxical professor of archeology span and or geology and or anthropology. I'm writing a series of articles on the Bosnian pyramids and I'm querying prof scientists, professors and science writers around the globe for their opinions on the subject. The five questions are, what is your opinion about the existence of pyramids in Bosnia? Two, what sources, if any, have you consulted in forming this opinion? Three, would you consider your opinion scientific? And if so, why? Four, do you agree with Robert Milton Schock's current statement on his official website? Quote, this is Robert Schock talking. It's been on his official website for many, many, many years. I have the screen grabs. I get screen grabs every four or five months. He's changed his official site URL, but it's, he always has the same thing on the Bosnian pyramids. So this quote is always there. Quote, I maintain my conviction that there are no pyramids at Visoka, Bosnia. Rather, all the so-called pyramids are the result of natural geological processes and phenomena that are currently being excavated, i.e. modified, to look like pyramids. Robert Schock. Now that's libel. Uh, no one's going to pursue that in court, but he's, he's saying that we're committing fraud, that anyone associated with Archaeological Park Foundation <clears throat> is committing fraud by, by making it seem like these hills are pyramids, which seems a little odd, seems like an odd thing to say, to accuse probably by now, that with all the volunteers that have come out, it's probably about 10,000 people have, who are associated with Archaeological Park Foundation. And he's saying that all those people that are associated with Archaeological Park Foundation, a Bosnian NGO nonprofit based in Sarajevo that oversees excavation in Visoko, Bosnia, are, are perpetrating fraud upon an unsuspecting public. Seems like an odd thing to say. Number five, have you visited the structures in Visoko, Bosnia? And if so, what was your experience there? If in replying, please let me know which, if any, of your statements may be quoted. Thank you for your time and interest in this matter. So I sent this letter to, to 1,300 professors of archaeology, anthropology, and geology. I received a 2% response rate. Of the 2%, 100% said that they believe 
that there are no pyramids in Bosnia. And the reason they believe that is because Robert Schock says there are no pyramids in Bosnia. And their answer to question number five, have you visited the structures in Visoka, Bosnia, was no, we have not visited there. So let me just recount those stats again. 2% reply rate from 1,300 emails. Of the 2%, 100% said no, no pyramids in Bosnia because Robert Schock said so, and no, we haven't been to Bosnia. That is our institutional, academic, professorial, scientific um, I just want to make sure that we have aha uh -huh. so I just want to make sure we have screen share sorry we didn't have screen share there let me just uh, go back to that letter so that that is our Here's that letter. That, that, that was our institutional, professorial, scientific, in quotes, um, cadre. So those professors who have never been to Bosnia are completely willing to say there are no pyramids in Bosnia. That is our opinion. We haven't been there. And then, then the rest of them just have, uh, give a silence and you're like wow they gave you silence so out of the 1300 98 percent are just silent they didn't even have the courtesy to reply okay so that's academia no one said anything about evidence <laughs> no one said anything about evidence nobody and that's that's academia so they have this opinion okay you have an, opi an opinion, oh, that's, that's great. Well, everybody has an opinion, but you're a professor of geology and you have an opinion and you're not gonna mention evidence. You're a professor of archeology span and you have an opinion and you're not gonna mention evidence. You're a professor of anthropology and you have an opinion, but you're not gonna mention evidence. Interesting. So. That's, that's academia. Now, I made a, a little video when I was in Bosnia on the Pyramid of the Sun, which has been shown to be a pyramid. We've known it's a pyramid since 2007. We, the scientific researchers, the independent researchers outside of academia who actually went to Bosnia, studied it and found out, studied the complex, or studied the features, the hills, as the orthodoxy wants to call them, and found out that they are pyramids and other structures in Visoko. So this, this was me standing on the Pyramid of the Sun one day on that road that was excavated a long time ago, gave us free excavation, and here's the... Here we are on the Bosnian Pyramid Complex. We have the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon in the center of the frame. And we are standing on the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. There's a little road here. And as we walk up this road, we notice features of this clay and claystone pyramid. So we have this rightward leaning claystone block. And then we have the soft clay right above it. There's the soft clay layer. Then we have another rightward leaning clay stone block, a lot uh, thinner. So this this block's about six inches. That's about inch and a half. Two inches, two inches, and between them, soft clay. We come along again here. This, so this road was free excavation. Same thing, we had the soft earthquake mitigating clay between the cl hard baked clay stone layers. They heated up this clay, which is, which has a, a history in etymology of being the same concept as glue. In fact, in the Proto-Indo-European language, glay was glue. 
and glay became clay. So their clay was glue. To us, it's uh, dirt. To them, it was glue. And if you heat it up, it becomes glue. It glues itself to itself and becomes a baked clay stone. Or, if it's softer, like in this little layer in, in between, it can glue hard material to hard material. It can become glue between those and also can mitigate earthquakes. So you keep seeing these alternating baked clay stone and soft clay layers. Here's another example right here. Sectioning. So they're done with one block, they start another block. And in between the blocks, soft earthquake mitigating clay. You ask yourself, am I a scientist? I didn't have my university training. I must not be a scientist. I'm just little old me. Really? Well, if you have eyes and you use your eyes to gather information and then use your brain to process it, you can be a scientist. What is a scientist? A scientist, a good scientist, a real scientist. Is one who, who bypasses cultural indoctrination, the indoctrination of the language that we use, which has its own pitfalls, its own traps, and the indoctrination of the universities, which tell us how to think. Sometimes the universities are correct. Um, sometimes they're not. If they're not, then the student when, when he or she goes out into the world, needs to bypass that indoctrination. And so we have in uh, the sciences a massive amount of uh, incorrect information being taught as truth. Big problem. Then uh, this, the students go out and they have difficulty, to one degree or another, based on the individual, overcoming that indo indoctrination filtering it out to see what they're to, to see what they're really looking at because you can look at this and if you're if you're a graduate of a you know, uh, school of archaeology you'll see sedimentary layers and you've been told time and time again that there are no ancient civilizations in Bosnia that the earliest cultured civilization was the Romans or perhaps the Illyrians and before that no ancient certainly no pyramid building cultures that's what you've been told so this must be sedimentation this must be natural and, the, and but if you look with your eyes all you see is the clear evidence if you filter out the indoctrination of the university you see the clear evidence of a built structure. And it is the tallest documented pyramid on the planet. There may be taller pyramids, but this is the tallest documented one. Let's uh, continue to use our eyes. Go out, gather evidence in your neighborhood of what you see beneath the soil, of what you see uh, cropping out above the soil. Take photos, make videos, bring those to the public so that the public can use its global mind to uh, so that we can help each other arrive at the truth about humanity's past on earth and about the past of all the races that have lived here. It's a big mosh pit over millions of years and to sort it out is going to take a lot of time and we need the help of real scientists using their brains to their fullest capacity, using their eyes as clear lenses, focused on what they're seeing and not what they've been told, using their ears correctly. Everything that nature has given us, we need to use those and realize that we are scientists. Um, to one degree or another. It's just a question of whether or not we give in to the indoctrination of our language, our culture, 
and the university. This is Jack Doubleday reporting for Archaeological Park Foundation, a Bosnian NGO nonprofit based in Sarajevo, which oversees excavation in the Bosnian Pyramid mega complex, centered in Visoko, Bosnia, in the heart of the Balkans. I hope you have a scientific day. What do you think? Because clearly the truth about our past is being at least controlled and as part of that must at least be being suppressed. Part of that must be being suppressed. Why are they only giving us part of the truth? Who's writing the textbooks? Now, if you go to Bosnia, instead of doing what the professors that I wrote to, the 1,300 professors who I sent this letter to in 2014, asking them five questions, you know, I quizzed the professors instead of them quizzing someone else, they're getting quizzed. Here, here's some questions for you. They chose en masse not to answer because professors don't like being given quizzes. Here's your quiz. <laughs> from a random guy on the internet. They're like, no, no, I give the quizzes. It was pretty much their, their attitude. And the ones who did reply said, yeah, I believe the guy from Yale, Robert Schock. He didn't give evidence, but I believe him because he has a PhD and he's from Yale. Woohoo! So that was it. Now, but if you go to Bosnia, you can see, for instance, something I saw one day when I was there in my 23 months in the complex. Let's go check out this video. And as we go down this road, we notice, which is on the side of the Pyramid of the Sun, we notice these rightward leaning construction stones. So my camera's about level there. They are baked clay construction stones from ancient times. We're on our way to a new excavation site that will tell us more about this pyramid. And so we are little by little gaining more knowledge. There's some more rightward leaning construction stones and those are massive and we can, we've seen those in other videos. There's another rightward leaning clay stone, larger piece there. This owner of this private land right below the road. Kakwi day. Super dobro. Um, and uh, oh, Puno. Dobro. Large construction stones. Wow. And they're just excavating their land here. Oh yeah. So Lepagena uh, excavating Lupatum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the uh, lovely uh, ancient construction stones have been revealed by their hard work. Wow. Ima dve tri vrste gline. Ima bijela glina, ima glina ona brown, vezivo, čvrsto vezivo tkivo, koje, kojim su ovaj, vezani blokovi izzidani, odnosno pravljena piramida. Dobro, dobro. Ovaj dio sad otkriva sasvim drugi položaj nego što je prikazano na onim prethodnim slikama koliko ja vidim. Moguće, moguće je da je sasvim drugi oblik piramide. Tako, super, super, super. Tako da ovaj dio, ovaj dio već više ovdje nema nema nastavak. Aha. Što je moguće, ne znam, možda je nesto negdje taj komad ili je eventualno kraj piramide otprilike možda na za jedan metar. Fantastično. Ovo pokazuje jedan sloj koji je površinski, a ovo dolazi drugi sloj. E, dole sad, ja mislim da imaju još tri, četiri, ne znam tačno. 
i evo, našao sam i nekakav kristal sad prije desetak minuta, pa bože moj. Dobre, a treba sutra doći, ja mislim, sutra će doći ovdje na predavanje nekako sa nekom ekspedicijom, pa sam ga trebao upoznat sa ovim. On za ovo ne zna. On za ovo ne zna. Ovaj položaj sada, ovog dijela piramide, dovodi nas do novih saznanja. Do novih saznanja o piramidi i o položaju njenom. Glina i... Sand. Clay and sand. Ne znam šta je to, vjerujem. Oh, ok. I'm going to translate every single thing that you said. Ja se ne razumijem u te materijale. Dobro, well, and we see all these layers, but we also see another layer of stone of the, the smaller right red leaning. Vidite te taloge i to. To su razne strukture materijala. And we see soft clay, glina i kamen. Kamen, sve, sve glina, e, e, kamen. Pogledajte, pogledajte sad ovu, ovu strukturu. Gledajte, ovaj kamen. On je ovako presječen. No međutim sastavni dio, vidite kako je urađen. To to sad ne može da uradi naša civilizacija nije u stanju da uradi sa pomagalima. A šta je tad bilo ja ne znam. Na koji način su ovo izveli? To je ipak specijalnost nekakva materijali su to jako teški, ovaj tvrdi, teški za obradu. Uglavnom ovo je neka visoka tehnologija rađena. Visoka tehnologija. Koliko je na mrtvi zvuk civilizacije? Pa ja mislim 30.000 godina. 30-ak, možda i više. Možda i više. Dobro. Hvala puno. Puno radi, puno radi. Pomalo. Dobro, dobro. Pomalo. I just want to get some photos of this texturing. Because the kamena has a little bit of a wave to it on the top as it always does this deep uh, non-regular gouging which I call texturing is not rippling from water <laughs> so here we have obviously layered uh, construction material with soft clay between for earthquake mitigation and for thermal insulation sound insulation and we have textured tops of the stones, incredible. And I'm just gonna get some photos right now, so. So we just got done uh, with a little bit more excavation here, and we found a new layer right here. Also rightward leaning, it's the beginning of a new layer. There's some other little smaller pieces that were in there too. But we see that this might be part of this layer here as it comes down. You can see this rightward leaning layer, and this is probably, that little piece is probably part of that. Just looking at the texturing that they always do on the top. They could make it flat if they wanted, but I mean smooth. It's a flat slope, but it's, the stones aren't smooth. And we continually find this texture. Yeah. We also see a slight stepping, so this is slightly taller. This is slightly taller. This is slightly taller, which you'd expect. This is slightly taller. Right here you can see how it's just a little bit taller on the right, so that it helps to keep the one above. And this is just slightly, slightly taller on the left, so it keeps the one above from coming down. And they've done that with the concrete as well up there on other excavation sites that we've that the foundation has uncovered with volunteers but these are super volunteers volunteer private kuche private house willing to give us their time and labor to help the foundation discover the truth about our past so we're just going that's where we were at this other site down there and we're just heading up his little path on his land oh yeah Beautiful textured stone, wow. We're gonna go get a photo of that right now. Let's go look at this beautiful textured stone. He's got apples, yabuka. Oh, look at this thing. Fantastic. Wow. I 
want to keep the leaf on it. I like the leaf. But I don't like this plastic bag. Hold on. Double it up. And then we're going to get close. We can see this dramatic gouging, which is not rippling. So the people who say that these are from lake beds or river beds are incorrect. This is gouging. <laughs> and we have tool marks on stones that will insert them here. And in fact, this gouging might also itself be tool marks. Uh, we don't know exactly how they did it. But you can see this incredible... Hang on. Fantastic snow. Uh, texturing. We've got to call it texturing because it's purposeful. Valovito. Texturing. Dobro. Valopuno. Yeah. Good to see you. Vidimo se. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. Hvala, ciao, ciao. And the good people of Bosnia come through once more by inviting us onto their land. You, me, and all the internet are welcome here in Bosnia, where there are very few fences. Mostly it's just land, and if you walk onto somebody's property, they say, would you like some coffee? They do not say, can I help you, which is Californian for, what are you doing on my property? This is Josh Double A reporting for Archaeological Park Foundation. And we're just going to end on this one shot of rightward leaning construction material on the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. I hope you all have a scientific day. And as we go down this road, we notice. So that is what you can do if you don't take the orthodoxical scientific academic university at its word because the universities are unanimous in their opinion of the Bosnian pyramids. They say there are no pyramids in Bosnia. So this fellow and his wife who was doing all the work as we talked, when he found these beautiful stones laid next to each other with clay next to them, in between them, so there's always the channeling between the stones. They always leave room for the earthquake mitigating clay. So everything's packed with the soft clay. It's like when you send a package in the mail, you just pack soft stuff around it. It's exactly what they did because they don't want their structures to, to come down an earthquake and the soft clay allows the structure to move and just to stay one structure and the earthquake stops and then you've still got the pyramid. It's genius. <clears throat> So this, this fellow, when, when, he, when he and his wife excavated these stones, as many homeowners have done through the centuries there in, in Visoko, they found these bizarre stones. They don't know what to make of it. They just don't know what to make of it. Where are they going to go? Who are they going to tell? The universities? The universities will say, oh, that's just rippling. They'll just make fun of them. They'll shame them, humiliate them. So, they, so the homeowners just... Said, so, well, we got these stones, we don't know what to do. Let's just make our foundation and forget about it. So that's what they do. Well, this fellow happened to find out the, the, that he had these stones on his property after Samir had said, this is a pyramid. So Samir took the chance of getting the ridicule from academia, and that's exactly what he got, and from the media, and from even independent researchers and archaeologists independent quotes, many of them also are against the project for reasons that nobody knows. Because no one's ever adduced evidence. No one's ever said, here's some evidence showing that there are no pyramids in Bosnia. They just say things. They just say, no, no, no. And if I told you what goes on behind the scenes in the independent researchers, the, the guys with the, you know, the, the, the celebrities who have books and they go on book tours and the speaking tours and stuff like that, the people who are against the project, if I told you what's going on behind the scenes, you would be like, it's just, it's just, it's just unbelievable.
what's going on. In the endeavor to shut down the Bosnian pyramids project. Why? No one knows. Nobody has any clue why there are so many forces at work trying to shut down the Bosnian pyramids. Work, you know, the, the, the excavation. Nobody knows why. But it's a prevalent dark energy throughout the planet. It's just, it's, it's, it's bizarre. That's why I called my first article the mysterious anti-scientific agenda of Robert Shaw, because it's just mysterious. It's not like we have any idea what it's about. It's just anti-scientific. What's the motivation? Nobody knows. People keep emailing me with ideas. I'm like, no, I don't think that's right. I don't think any of those ideas are right. I think we just don't know what this energy is. I think it's just a dark force that's, that's captured some people's uh, energy, you know, otherwise good scientific energy. So <clears throat> what should we go to next? All right, I was gonna do, I think we should do Stanton's Cave in the Grand Canyon. And you're like, but I thought this was about Bosnia. Yeah, well, let's, uh, it, all, it all relates. All right, so we have Stanton's Cave. And you're like, it's a cave, it's so wonderful. A natural cave, isn't nature amazing? And then you go, wait, who named it a cave? Because it's clearly a tunnel. So why are they calling a Stanton's cave and not a tunnel? Just like Mammoth Cave. Why are they calling that a cave and not a tunnel system? Because it's a tunnel system. They're calling it a cave so that you won't explore it, so that you think it's natural, so that you don't care about it. It's, 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 that's what they do. They never do anything else except try to suppress the truth, period. So the people in charge of naming things, and guess what? Your textbook's all about naming things. So people in charge of writing your textbooks in the universities and on down are desperate to suppress the truth for some reason, for some mysterious reason. Okay? So we, we don't have universities. We have suppressions that look like buildings. And we have professors who are the dupes of that suppression. They don't know that they're giving you false information. They're, they're, they're going from the textbooks, you know? Who wrote the textbooks though? Well, you all know who wrote the textbooks. I don't have to tell you. Stan's Cave, a prehistoric tunnel entrance that the government has labeled a cave and blocked off to human travel with the bat gate. We have to preserve the bats. So we're gonna put a steel mesh. The bats can get through it, but people can't. We don't. We don't want to disturb the bats. We're going to put a freaking gate over it for the bats. It's so wonderful because we're going to help the bats. Oh, really? That's what you're doing? You're helping the bats? That's so, that's so great. People are amazing. Bat lovers. Good job. So also, they don't tell you how the Grand Canyon was formed. Let's go through. Let's run some slides and just look at Stanton's cave for a second. We'll just look at this. So you're rafting down the river and you're like, it's a kid. That's before they put the bad gate over it, before they put the bad gate over it, okay? And you're like, what a wonderful cave. I'm sure it's not a tunnel because they called it a cave, so no need to try to explore further than just thought. There's the little bat gate they put there. So now you can't get in, yay. Because we're gonna take care of the bats. It's so wonderful. Um, so, um, but what they, don't, uh, what they don't tell you is that this whole gorge that contains the Colorado River, you know, the Grand Canyon, was created probably in a few minutes or less, maybe in a minute by plasma discharge not by erosion, but guess what orthodox school academic professors will tell you was the cause of the deep gorge that is the Grand Canyon. They'll say it was erosion. It was water because water erodes things and what else could it really be? So that's what I'm gonna tell you. And if you don't you know, say that on the test, you fail. Oh, so wait, I'm paying you to, 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 to say that, to learn that it's erosion that created that? 
and not plasma discharge from a planet that was closer in the past? Wow. Okay. Uh, so anyway, research the Thunderbolts project, Wallace Thornhill, plasma discharge, electrical scarring or electric, or electric scarring of planets. Just, just search YouTube for electric scarring, Mars electric scarring, Earth electric scarring, and you see the, the jagged electric plasma discharge that took out material from the planet surface, various planets surfaces in the not too distant past and threw material up and created tons and tons of uh, um, asteroids, basically, just floating around out there, dust. And uh, the orthodoxy has one answer. It was a river water erosion. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the bat cave, too. The bat, the bat gate, for we'll call it a cave, and then we'll call it the bat cave. Ooh. And you're like, why are you showing us that? Why are you showing us a, a cave that's really a tunnel? Well, check this out. Here's Bosnia. Built not dug, KTK tunnel was left as an empty space in an artificially constructed claystone hill in the Bosnia pyramid complex. You're like, that's just way too much information. Don't even hurt my brain with that. I get you. Check that out though. Is that like a naturally dug tunnel or does it look like they inclined layers of clay, clay baked adhered clay because there's each layer stuck to the next but it's you know it's not the thing about the ancients is that they, they had different levels of heating of their material so you've got the hard baked clay stones this is not quite that it's not quite heated that that much it's soft enough to adhere to the next layer right so on, on that side you've got each layer as it's cooling it's adhering to the next and it's so soft enough to do that soft enough on the other side to do that and everything's adhering and, and becoming one hill and then they just left it as an empty space i mean that's clear there's no there's no doubt about that so that's a that's when you're stepping toward the, the entrance of the tunnel not a cave orthodoxy yeah it is a tunnel system it goes under the river and it goes to the bosnian pyramid of the moon this is in visoko so um you, you can see the layering the baked adhered clay layers different thicknesses all inclined into the structure the ancients always inclined their material all around the world so south africa inclined Bosnia, all their structures, tumuli, pyramids, hills, always inclined into the face of the of the hill or structure, pyramid, whatever, you're, whatever face you're facing toward the structure, it's always weighted inward, weighted inward, weighted inward. And that's what engineers would do to make a lasting structure for reasons that don't need to be gone, gone, gone into. Then you've got Ravne Tunnel, which is the other tunnel system in Visoko. It winds for tens of kilometers beneath the Bosnian pyramid complex. And we know that from two ground penetrating radar scans that were done by Klaus Dona. Thank you very much. So, Ravne Tunnel Labyrinth, a prehistoric tunnel dug out of a hill built in ancient times. And you're like, that's way too much information, but there's more. It's not just that the hill was built in ancient times. So the hill behind me is not a natural hill. All that was built. And you can see the concrete starts in the middle. Uh, you can just go to that video and you can see that. But the, the layers of clay and claystone, so there's the hard baked clay stones, as always, and then the soft earthquake mitigating clay, hard baked clay stone. They're, they're leftward leaning and inclined into the hill, right? And then you suddenly get, they just straight across, you get the concrete. It's like a meter of concrete across the top. And that goes all the way to the top of Robne Tunnel itself, which is down on the right about 20 meters from the, in this photo. So uh, that's, so behind me, if you just turn around and look at the hill from that previous one, there's a baked clay stone. That, that stone's actually about, so it's over a meter long and probably about, I don't know, almost half a meter thick. Maybe half a meter thick. Massive. 
inclined into the hill and leftward leaning. Then you got the soft earthquake mitigating clay above and below. Then you got the next block on the right, next block on the left. So the hill was built that Ravne Tunnel exists in. And you're like, did they really dig it? And I say prehistoric tunnel dug out of a hill. But, but so the extra information is if KTK tunnel was left as an empty space in a built hill, maybe they also left Ravne tunnel as an empty space and did not laboriously dig it. You know, but if they're going to build a hill, why would they then laboriously dig a tunnel system out of it? Why not just leave the space empty that you want to have be a tunnel? I think that's probably what they did. So that, that's the extra. So maybe it's not dug out of, you know, maybe it's left as an empty space. So then you go, I wonder if that's what they did with Stanton's cave, you know? Maybe they built that whole bedrock. Maybe all that's built and they left that as an empty space. Who's digging that? Who's digging that out of that incredibly hard stuff? Where are they bringing the material if they're 20, 30, 40 meters below the surface of the earth? Where are they bringing the material they're digging out? They're not bringing it anywhere. So I think this was left as an empty space too. And if that, all that's not bedrock, that's, that's concrete. I think all that's concrete. And you go, well, if that's concrete, then where does their terraforming end? And you go, once you start looking at, you know, once you, once you get into one of these megalithic sites and use it as a key to unlock more and more about the earth, you go, I think they're just terraformed the earth. I think it's all terraformed. And then you go, how deep did they terraform the earth? You know, how deep did the building go? Because ain't nobody digging that tunnel. It's not a cave orthodoxy. So, all right, let's go to Sarajevo, which is south east of Visoko, not too far, 20 miles. This is just a hill alongside a road and on the way to Sarajevo, very near Sarajevo. And you got the same thing. You got the baked claystone layers and the soft earthquake mitigating clay above and below. You can see the blocks ending on the left and right. So they meet the little bit of space between them. There's a claystone block heated in the past by the ancients. And there's the guy that sent me the photos. He lives in Sarajevo. He's like, check it out, man. Sarajevo's built too. And you're like, well, if the, if the pyramid complex is in Vista was built and the hills around Sarajevo were built, and we know that the Bosna River, which joins both, both cities, is at least to some extent built because it's built in Visa, but we saw that. You can just find my, my uh, video on that. Uh, I think it's called uh, Who Built the, the Bosna River or who, or who Built the Bosnia River, something like that. Just go to my channel, Jock Double Day, or go to Bosnian Pyramids YouTube. Okay, so we know that partial, partially, the, at least, the Bosnia River is built and it may be built in its entirety. Because if they're building hills in Sarajevo, then undoubtedly the riverbed next to the hills is also built because you're not going to build hills and then just have the, a natural river erode your hills. For whatever reason, they're, they're building hills, you know, in the Sarajevo Visoko area. And we don't know why they would build hills. We know why they build pyramids because they're energy machines. Are, are, are hills also energy machines? What else could they be for? Well, check out my video and article shielding, which talks about shielding inner earth civilizations from asteroid impacts. That that's what the alternating hard and soft layers throughout the world are for. And that hills too could be used for that purpose because if there's a huge asteroid that's coming down and that would be the problem and that hits and you've got a hill and a valley then the hills sir, will explode inward toward the valley and it'll, it'll take that vertical energy of the asteroid and explode it horizontally and that's what you'd want. That's really good. That's what, what hills could be used for. Oh, what a concept, right? So that, that's one theory. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they were doing. Uh, so let's go to the next. I've got um, actually extra videos for those who want to stay on um, past the time. We've got 10 more minutes. Let's see. Let's go. Let's just do, um, let's do these. 
All right, who terraformed the Earth? So, if you take archaeology or geology, you might come across a class that talks about Mima mounds, and your professor will talk about how gophers created Mima mounds. That's the theory. That's giant gophers, your professor will tell you. So you're paying him to tell you that giant gophers created Mima mounds all across the earth. You're paying him to tell you that. Uh, so you go, yeah, gophers, okay. They don't tell you how they got the material. Let's go to the next. Uh, so, so those are some, some screenshots if you want to just grab that, those screenshots later, whatever. This is from Terraforming Your Planet Earth. You can find that on my personal channel. All right, so let's go to the video. Um, let's do it this way, full screen. So here we have a really interesting example of this bizarre scalloping. And it's sort of finger-shaped scalloping here. One, two, three. But it's not quite fingers that are doing it, it seems, because it, then it comes up and it comes to a V right there. A finger would, wouldn't leave a V, right? It could but it's, it doesn't seem quite like a finger. But these are finger-shaped uh, valleys. Everywhere you look in this, this is just a particularly clear example of it. <clears throat> you can see the silhouette, scalloped ridges. And the ridges alongside the valleys are very sharp very 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 sharp you can almost cut yourself on how sharp they are I and mean, this material is really hard um this is material in the hills above the adriatic sea in rijeka croatia and this is really incredible material here that composes this hill and composes all the hills around here it's the same material and it's exactly the same material as we find in the hill country in texas uh, centering around Kerrville, Texas. Exactly the same. I spent a lot of time there, many, many days looking at that geology. And this is the exact same geology as in Kerrville, Texas. And you see this always in Kerrville, you see all this scalloping, these, these interesting sort of finger-sized valleys with these sharp ridges next to them, and they're always going up almost always going up, as if some organism were crawling up, crawling up, crawling up, and then some worm, when it was soft, crawled up, crawled up. And you say, well, if it was an organism that made those, if this was naturally formed material, perhaps, you know, uh, in the, under the ocean, you know, in the water, or, you know, in, in the soft mud next to the ocean, or in, in the lake bed, or, next to the lake bed where it's soft, then you wouldn't have these hard, really solidly sharp and hard ridges because the material would have been soft enough that it wouldn't have stayed, wouldn't have suddenly hardened to this ridge overnight. All of them wouldn't have just suddenly hardened to a sharp ridge. It wouldn't have made sense. They would have been soft, softened over time if they were gonna harden naturally. And so you have to wonder how they stayed so sharp. You know, and then you start to think, well, maybe this isn't naturally formed material after all. Maybe this is, maybe this material is laid down. And then you ask yourself more questions. You say, well, why do we find channels? In other words, why do we find sections in the material? Like, like this. And you say, oh, well, it broke apart over the years or really broke apart. Or, so there's one section. So there's on the left, and then on the right, you see it sort of channeled and all the way down. And then here, another channel. It doesn't look like it broke apart because we find the same worm-like, finger-like channeling ridging on this and on this. In other words, it's not like this broke off of this. This was 
channeled with these finger marks, whatever you want to call them. And so is this, so these were apart for thousands or millions of years. Why were these, why is there a channel here? Why does the channel go all the way there? Everywhere you look, there's sections. And it's the same way in Bosnia, it's the same way in South Africa. You see them building in sections. And the sections usually, well, the sections in Bosnia and South Africa that I've seen always have smooth sides. Now, these are not smooth, but they are rather regular, aren't they? I mean, they're not perfectly smooth, but they're pretty regular, right? Pretty regular. And you see that channel there, pretty regular. But then we see regular in the sense of the same width. And then you see this channel here, much wider, rather regular. There's a channel there, much wider, rather regular. Everywhere you see channels, sections. So we keep asking ourselves questions because the orthodoxy, the scientific orthodoxy, uh, geologists, archaeologists, and anthropologists <coughs> would come here and say, well, this is seabed material that's been grooved by worms and then the holes, the official statement on the holes is that, th th that these holes have been made by fung fungi over time, water pulls up, it feeds the, it, you know, moistens the fungi and the, the fungi eat through, eat through these. And there are ways to show that that's complete nonsense. And I'm going to do another video on that soon. But you see these holes all over the place. L let me just, let me just show that it's complete nonsense by one line of reasoning. And then there are five other lines of reasoning where we can show that the orthodox view is total gibberish, okay? This is said to be created by fungi. In other words, these holes were eaten away slowly over time. That's the orthodox view. But we see this ridging. You see the channeling of... These huge, almost like a huge finger came here, and a huge finger came here and left this really sharp ridge. Well, the fungi isn't leaving, it's leaving a sharp ridge, it's not leaving a valley along the edge of its thing that it's eating away. If it's eating away a, a circular-ish, a roundish area, because water's pooling in sort of a roundish way and, and slowly being eaten down in sort of a roundish way, left, right, a little bit, whatever, then it's not leaving these finger marks, right? It doesn't make sense. This looks like, if you really look at it, if you take time to look at it, and use your brain and your eyes together, it's a rare thing in science, but it should be the rule in science, but scientists don't seem to do that. <laughs> they, just, they just take the orthodoxical view, which is total nonsense on the face of it, and say, ah, oh, fungi eat through this, or water erosion, water erosion, really. Water erosion, water erosion. But then all you have to do is find a place that should have water erosion, but doesn't. I mean, if water is pooling, and, and then sort of eating through the rock, little by little, eroding through, then all you have to do is find a place where if there's a valley in the rock that doesn't ample. If anybody ever asks you, you say, yeah, gophers. Or in Africa. So your professor, and still exist, but there were now most of them in America. In, I mean, in, in North America, geology, and write down what um, so many questions that need answers. I'm just, uh, and what we need is people to ask the questions. You know, the next we need part people the to now. ask the questions and not just sit in a class. in the halls of academia and write down what um, the persons posing as the knowledge keepers say. If you take archaeology or geology, you might come across a class that talks about Mima mounds and your professor will talk about how gophers created Mima mounds, M-I-M-A, mounds, hundreds of millions of which exist in the world. Now, most of them in America, I mean, in North America, 
were bulldozed for development. <clears throat> so they don't exist anymore, but there are preserved areas where some Amaya Mountains still exist, but there were millions of them on the North American continent before, before development occurred. And there are hundreds of millions of them all over the world. Many of them are in Africa. So your professor, you'll be paying money to your expert, your professor, to tell you the following. Gophers created Mima, Mima Mounds. And, and you say, okay, let me write that down. Gophers, Mima Mounds. And then you go home and if anybody ever asks you, you say, yeah, gophers. Oh, those gophers. They don't, say, they don't tell you how. They don't say how they got the material. The Mima Mounds, if you take a sec just a cross section of the Mima Mounds, if you take a, a backhoe and dig down and then to the bottom of the Mima Mound and then further, you find out that the, the, the soil of the Mima Mounds is sitting, the rich loamy soil is sitting on a substrate of uh, a glacial rock. And then soil came in slowly after the melting of the, uh, the land ice on the North American continent. I'm just talking about North America right now. So <clears throat> then you say, well, but how did the gophers get the material to make the mounds? <laughs> it's, just a, it's just hard rock that no gopher could get one grain of sand from, right? And then the mound. Where are they digging all this earth up to get the mound from? There, there is no earth. It's just a rock. Um, so, and you, and you have a Mima mound and then another Mima mound and they, they connect to each other and they go for miles and miles. It's just Mima mounds. It's not like Mima mounds on top of some earth. It's just Mima mounds. And there's not layers and it's not turbulent. It's not chaotic as a, as a gopher mound would be. There's no you know, sort of modeling on the top. It's a nice, smooth, rounded surface, roundish from the top. The next one's nice and smooth and rounded. You never see that in nature. Gophers are always creating these really uh, chaotic surfaces to a more smooth, natural, you know, landscape. And so none of these issues are brought up by the scientific orthodoxy. Academia will simply tell you the most clownish thing possible about Mima Mountains with a straight face. And, and there's, no, there's no analogy to explain how absurd it is because it's so absurd that there's nothing as absurd as that. The only way you could, you could really help to explain how clownish it is is to put a clown costume on the professor. You need a clown costume, full clown costume, the whole thing and the makeup and the hair and the big feet. Then he says, my mounds were made by gophers. And then you watch, then you cut to the kids writing it down. Very serious, very serious face and the clown and the students. Oh, my mounds were made by gophers. Now, once we realize that this is an absolute bollocks, absolute nonsense, okay? Then we say, well, what did make the Mima mounds all over the world? What are creating these wave-like patterns across the earth and if it was done artificially by some intelligence by some species why did they do it why did they put that much work into creating these mounds were skeletons found in the mounds no was gold found in the mounds any kind of treasure silver um uh anything besides loamy rich homogeneous soil no just soil, beautiful dark soil, but it stayed a mound. It didn't get, the rain didn't come and pummel it flat as it should have. If we had done this across the land, the rain would have just washed them down and it would have eventually been flat after a few thousand years or maybe even after a thousand years or 500 years. The rain would have just made all of them flat, but somehow they were created in a way whether artificially or naturally, to let them survive over millennia, many millennia. How? How did they do that? And, and what was the purpose? Were these an energetic... <clears throat> Were they...
They're meant to mitigate Earth energy. And if so, for what purpose? Who did it and why? These are the questions that we need to ask because the universities don't ask them. The universities are the closed, narrowed, non-critical bastions of old knowledge. New knowledge, which is, which is what the universities should encourage, the university should be the place where the newest ideas are bantered about and looked at and, you know, that, that it's an exciting place for new knowledge to get tested. New knowledge is simply discarded before it's even considered. It's not considered. Only the old knowledge, which is the clown-faced, serious, uh, yes, the pyramids are tombs for kings, write that down. Oh, really? I mean, it's, it's, it's absurd. Um, so let's use the clown professor image to let us know immediately, instantly, that academia is um, brimming with nonsense. It is a clown factory because the professors create more clowns. And those are the people that go out and talk about the pyramids as tombs for kings. And Mima Mounds is made by gophers. Once we instantly, without image, dismiss the old way, the old knowledge, the artificial knowledge, the knowledge that is meant to suppress the truth, then we can instantly, in the next moment, have courage to explore reality to look at material and say, is that really made by worms and uh, erosion? Is this sectioning due to tectonic uh, uplift? As they'll tell us, some kind of chaotic earthquake uh, energy or tectonic energy, or is it something else? And all we have to do is use our eyes. In other words, it, if we can just get rid of this reverence for, for, for the academic viewpoint by seeing that they're clowns with big wigs, colorful wigs, and big, big clown shoes, then we can instantly take a deep breath and go, oh, it's up to us to use our eyes and our brains together to determine what we think might be true and to test hypotheses. And that's what science is. Science is absolutely banned from the universities. Science is banned from the universities, except the science that gives us the trivial answers. That, just like Wikipedia, gives us the trivial truth. If you wanna know what hummingbird might be in your yard, Wikipedia. If you wanna know the truth about our past, banned from Wikipedia. Media and from the universities. This is Jock Doubleday reporting from Rijeka, Croatia on January 5th, 2017. I hope you all have a scientific day and that you take uh, heart in the fact that you are the scientist, that you are the new professors who can take your scientific research to others who might want to learn something about our past and who might want to therefore have a foundation for the future. So here we have All a really right, so interesting. That's a little bit more about academia. It's ten after six, so we could call it good. And uh, if you want to hang in.
a little longer. By the way, I just want to remember, remember uh, so we talked about the uh, undulating mima mounds, right? Um, then you've got the Valovito, which is what the private land over owner on the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun said uh, was a good name for the texturing of the stone. This undulating quality, same thing. So then you go, I wonder what's, what's happening. Maybe it's all for the same reason, you know? Um, let's see, I've got other video clips that go on and on and on. I'm just wondering if I should call it good. Um, hmm. I think it's good. I think it's good because I don't want to bore anybody. If you want to check out the videos from which uh, these clips were taken, just just go find this Ceremony of Planet Earth or on my personal channel or um, Who Built the Earth, quote, It Formed. On my personal channel, Jeff Doubleday. All right. So that's uh, filtering out university indoctrination. Who are the real scientists today? Who are they? Well, they're the independent researchers who truly are independent from the, from the institutions, from academia. Because if you're not independent from academia, you're in big trouble. Sarah Aconci, or Aconci, from Italy, came out and was the lead archaeologist on the Bosnian Pyramids project. And she was there in 2011 when I first volunteered. And she said that when she got her degree in Italy, she said, I'm going to go work in Bosnia. And they said, no, you're not. You're not going to go work in Bosnia. Because if you do, we can guarantee you that you're not going to have a job when you come back to Italy. No one will hire you because we know there are no pyramids in Bosnia. It's a hoax. And she said, OK, well, thanks for the piece of paper. I'm going to go to Bosnia. See you later. So she went to Bosnia, where there are pyramids, and she worked there. <laughs> but you see, that's what the orthodoxy is. It's, it's, it's a machine for destroying knowledge. It has nothing to do. Academia has nothing to do with, with gathering the truth or forwarding, furthering knowledge among the populace. It's the absolute opposite. It's about destroying and suppressing knowledge. Always suppressing, always suppressing. If they can destroy it, they will. Now, who is the, so who is the scientist? Who is the new scientist? Well, the new scientist is the, anyone who decides to use their brain and their eyes in concert. If you can use your brain and your eyes together, you're a scientist. Do you need a degree to do that? You don't. All you need to do is look. And if you want to look and have a video camera at the same time on what you're looking at and sort of talk about what you're seeing, that's really good because you can, you can put that out to the public and the public can go, go along with you on that journey. And maybe it'll be worth their time. Maybe it won't, right? But the global mind gets to decide. And there's a mind, a hive mind of people who actually use their brains. And that's outside of academia, because no one's using their brains in academia. No one's using their brains in academia. They're repeating what they've heard, just like monkeys can do. <laughs> monkeys can do that, OK? And that's what's happening in the universities. Um, who wrote the textbooks? Always come back to that. Who wrote the textbooks that give us the knowledge that's being repeated? And once you find out who did it, then you start to get a clue about what's, what's, what's really going on. Because once you find out who did it and you, and you know who they are and you research their agenda, their larger agenda, then you go, oh, that's what's going on. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Universities is always in quotes. They're not universities. They're, 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 it's like the factory farming uh, slaughterhouses. You just put the, you put the knowledge in, the information, the science in, and it gets destroyed. It's murdered. 
That's what the university is. So it's a slaughterhouse. It's, a, it's the academic slaughterhouse. So we are the new scientists, right? One of the places where new science is being performed is the Bosnian pyramids. Uh, is on the Bosnian pyramids project. So go out to the Bosnian pyramid complex, check out check out uh, the two tallest docu uh, docu two tallest documented pyramids on the planet: the Bosnian pyramid of the sun, the Bosnian pyramid of the moon. And uh, you know, check out a built riverbed. I mean, there's a built riverbed joining those two pyramids, okay? That's pretty crazy. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it good. Um, I hope everybody's had enough of the clown-faced, orthodoxical university um, nonsense that I've tried to bring to light because there's nothing more ridiculous than yes the earth coalesced from dust and gas it's just absurd yes there was a big bang where everything that exists came from nothing really okay my mountains are made by gophers um, the Grand Canyon was made by water river water erosion um, and there's no pyramids in Bosnia. So, so all those things and thousands and thousands and thousands more ideas that, that the universities will tell you when you pay your money, your lots and lots and lots and lots of money for tuition and for textbooks written by bankers. Those ideas are meant to mislead. Okay. So I hope you all have a scientific day which right now in 2019 is a day that can only be had outside the academic institution, in the field. So if you're going out into the field and you're using your eyes to look, okay, and looking and seeing are part of a process, okay? You start out by looking and what is looking? It's not viewing. Most people who go to, who go to the Bosnian pyramids or anywhere else, they just view, they're tourists. They view, take a selfie, and go home and say, I was in the Bosnian pyramids. Look, here's me standing in front of a pyramid. Here's me with Semir. That's not looking. Looking is standing in front of something and spending time and not letting belief get in the way. You just keep looking and you keep looking. And then, you, then, then, then two minutes goes by and you're like, that's a long time. No, do it for 20 minutes, do it for an hour. Just stand there and look. And eventually, you, you, you can start to see things. You can start to see the differentiation between the darker soil on the top, which is natural, then the clay layers, the soft clay layers, then the hard baked clay stones, then you start to see the inclination, then you start to see the leftward leaning or rightward leaning of the clay stone layers. Then you, then, then you go, wow, and maybe I should check out the laboratory analyses that have been done of the concrete see what's happening there and you find out it's the hardest documented ancient concrete ever analyzed on the Bosnian pyramid of the sun. And you, then you start to research more and more about the, the science that's been performed. So, the, so, the, so instead of viewing as a tourist does, you look, you spend time, then you can see and then you get interested because once you've seen past the beliefs, the indoctrination of the universities, then you can become interested and excited and energized. That's exa and that's what the bankers don't want you to do. They don't want you to become excited and energized. They don't want you to sit in class bored to tears while you parrot what some drone that calls himself a professor says. I hope everybody has a scientific day. I'm just gonna end on this t-shirt again, digging the true history. Let's keep digging physically and metaphorically, because there are forces at work, dark forces bent on suppressing the truth. Have a great day.
Peace.